Good morning everyone, how are we? It's 10 o'clock, it is Wednesday? Yes, it's Wednesday because the milkman came today and he comes Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so it must be Wednesday by process of elimination. Let me do that embarrassing, annoying thing where I tag people. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Just see if anyone is around. I uh, hope everybody is well and happy and healthy and doing okay this morning. Well, that's a few folk tagged. Um, I'm really bad at this. Hammer a few names on this list and see who's up for it. Just throwing people in at random. Cool. Hello. Good morning. Right. That's the admin done. Um, hi. How is everyone? I hope you're all okay. I have got my Manchester Coffee Festival t-shirt on this morning, which I am very proudly wearing. And I'm hoping we will be able to have a great cup of coffee this November in Manchester when it's uh, back on again. Today, what I'm planning to do is make an AeroPress. A few people have asked me about this. If you're not familiar with an AeroPress, this is an AeroPress. I know what you're thinking. Trust me, I know what you're thinking. It looks not like an AeroPress. This, 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 this looks like something else completely. But trust me, this is a coffee piece of equipment and nothing else. So, I have a long and checkered history with the AeroPress. It's actually one of my least favourite methods of brewing coffee. I can't stand it, but I've had so many requests for it, and I've had loads of people asking me how to brew with it. I'm going to show you one of my techniques. Now, there is an, an international competition every year to see who is best in the world at making an AeroPress, and there are more recipes to how to brew an AeroPress than there are grains of sand on every beach in the world. So, what I tell you is completely not authoritative. You can do whatever you want. There are no rules. Just mess around with it and see how it goes. They are very popular. They're marketed as being a home espresso maker. That's categorically not true. They're not a home espresso maker. They are a home coffee maker. You can make a slightly concentrated coffee with this, which if you use fresh enough coffee, will have a bubbly foam on the top, a bit like a crema, but it is not espresso. And um, I use this to make a single cup of filter coffee at a time. To my cost, because I've taken this away with me a few times with weekends with friends, and I've made a cup of coffee, and then someone else said, oh, can I have a cup? And I made another, and another, and another. And before I know where I am, I've been there for an hour and a half, hand grinding and making cups of coffee, one after another after another. But that is what we do when we are making coffee. We are serving other people, we are looking after each other. So this is a good thing. Anyway, long and checkered history. My first coffee competition in 2014, uh, for those of you with long enough memories, I used two AeroPressers simultaneously to brew coffee for my Irish coffees because I wanted something full bodied, which this does very well because of its immersion brew that I'm gonna show you. Um, and I also wanted something that was fairly simple, fairly replicable and easy to do on a budget, which is definitely what I was doing. So I'm just going to show you my technique. Um, today I'm brewing a coffee from Rwanda. I've pre-weighed out 17 grams of coffee here. Again, it's a pre-ground coffee, so I don't have control of grind size. So I'm just going to show you what to do if you're just doing coffee, no control of the grind size. So again, this is a fairly fine grind, like a kind of a percolator filter drip. So we're going to do an inverted soak, but we're only going to do it for about a minute and a half because I don't want to over extract. Rwandan coffee is tremendous. It's delicious stuff. Um, often kind of red bourbon uh, is the varietal that people use. By the way, there is a fill, uh, there's a funnel that you can get for your AeroPress that helps you get this stuff in, but I can't find it. There we go, that's more or less in, fine. Yes, Rwanda, a lot of red bourbon over there. After the horrendous civil war and genocide, um, there was plans from the Rwandan coffee authorities to uh, rip up all the trees and plant lots and lots of high yield, low quality crops to bring in cash as fast as possible. But a range of experts, um, people I know amongst them, um, went to Rwanda, saw what rootstock they had, saw what incredible potential the coffee in this country had and said, don't stick with what you've got. And now they produce some of the best washed coffees in the world. Washed coffees, you pick it, you peel it, you stick it in a tank, it ferments, you run it around a little bit get rid of all the fruit, job done. Light, bright, acidic fruiting. So, just rinsing my filter paper. 
you can't see this because it's I haven't got the hands. But basically, these little goo pots that you can buy from the supermarket. Um, when you have these, and they're empty, you stick them through the dishwasher, and then they're the perfect size to put your um, AeroPress filter on, and then you press it, and basically, it kind of, you, you pour the water through, and it rinses your filter paper for you. Let me show you what I'm doing. I'm going to turn my scales on. We are going to put in about 30 or 40 grams of water. Let's go with 30. Start my clock. I'm just going to give that a little stir just to make sure everything is nice and wet and those pores are opening up properly. So Rwanda is one of my all-time favourite origins. It's been a long time since I've had a cup of Rwanda, so I thought today I would treat myself and have some Rwanda. Right, now that has been running for 20, 30 seconds or so. Let's keep it, let it tick through. We'll top up to 250-ish. Oh, you need to see the top of that, don't you? There we are. We have 250 mil. It's a full thing. And then this is going to be super hard to achieve with one hand whilst holding the camera. You kind of screw that on like that. Hang on. I hope you can still see me. There. Right. Okay. So, screwed on. Nice and tight. Clock is counting up. I'm going to give this about a minute and a half, minute 45. So the reason I'm doing it this way around, what happens here, you've got a column of hot water with the coffee in it. Uh, what this does is it performs a, an immersion brew. So you've got simultaneous extraction of the whole particle set at the same time. It's a nice, even brew. The instructions are tell you to do it the other way around and put the plunger in so that not much drips out, but you still get a bit of drip out and it doesn't give you an even and consistent brew. Spinning that round now, here comes the messy and embarrassing bit. I need to spin this over and land it on top of my server and then press it through. So, a little shimmy, woo, that's hot. And then a quick flip and then a press. So quite a short soak because my grind's a little bit finer than I'd like it to be. I'm not going to push through too hard because I don't want to make too much pressure on the back of it. I'm sorry if it sounds like there's a helicopter taking off, my washing machine's on. This is all glamour. Right, so if you can just see at the bottom here, I've got a little bit left. Right, when it gets to the point where it starts hissing, that's the air pushing through rather than the coffee, so that's when you stop. You just have a little bit left in there. And the great thing about these little pots So now we have our coffee. Back up here. So, beautiful. Not 100% clear, you do get some microfines in, it just can tend to be a little bit silty. Smells great though. On brand this morning, Hannah. Right. Straight away, I get hit with that. Fruity, kind of lemony, almost kind of red curranty, you know, blackberry kind of smell. I'm really pleased that I didn't do that for any longer because that's about as extracted as I want it to be. It's quite light, it's quite bright, it's quite refreshing. Um, but if I'd left that much longer, it would have started to over extract and started to get really bitter. If it's not bitter, it's delicious. So again, I've got a nice acidity, a little bit of milk chocolate character towards the back. It's got really good sweetness. It's got that fresh fruit, refreshing lemon, red fruit kind of characteristics going on. One of the things that I often get from coffees from this part of the world, Rwanda, Burundi, Democratic Republic of Congo, Uganda, places like that, is I get a bit of an earthiness to it. Um, and I've never really fully managed to explain what this is, but it's, it reminds me of the defect that sometimes comes from this part of the world. Uh, it's a very specific localised defect and it makes your coffee smell like potatoes. And it's minging, it's horrible, you don't want it. And I remember um, a few years ago watching Claire Wallace doing her UK Barista Championship presentation in London. 
uh, and she'd been working with the barn in Berlin for quite a while, uh, talking about how to eliminate potato defect in Rwandan coffees. And this was the center point of her whole routine. And I remember her coming up on stage, doing her introduction, being very impressed with her. Uh, and then she went into her grinder. And the first thing that happened as soon as she went into her grinder was the entire room started smelling of potatoes. What a disaster. Now, lots of people would have completely lost it at this point, panicked and run away. But not Claire, because Claire is an absolute hero. What she did is she styled it out spectacularly and turned to the judges and said, I'm just purging my grinder. This is my real shot. Cleaned the basket, pulled another shot, perfectly clean, no problems at all. The judges don't mark your purge shot, so it doesn't matter that her routine about eliminating potato defects started with a potato defect. What she delivered in the cup didn't have a potato defect. It was one of the most impressive overcoming adversary stories in a competition that I've seen in recent years. So, thank you, Claire. You're a superstar and a hero, well played. And I am gonna sit here, enjoy my Rwanda in my Manchester Coffee Festival mug with my Manchester Coffee Festival t-shirt on and look forward to seeing you at Manchester Coffee Festival at the end of the year. Because by then, everything is awesome!